Okay, guys. Um, hopefully you guys can see me now. If you guys can see this video, please let me know. I wanted to answer some questions that I was getting on homeschooling. I'm sorry a little, I'm a little sick. If I sound a little <clears throat> muffled, it's because I'm sick. <laughs> Been sick since um, last weekend. So, okay. So, I have another page. If you guys don't know that, you guys can go to Fun Kid Stuff. Just go ahead and type in Fun Go here to where it says Fun Kid Stuff, right here, and then it'll take you to this page, and these are my kids right here, and so you can just go ahead and click on this link right here, and it'll take you to this page. So this is where I share all of the homeschooling stuff. Sometimes I'll share it on my um, other page, my couponing page, but for the most part, um, I try to share it here on this um, page. So it's called Fun Kid Stuff. I share different deals like for kids that are homeschooled here, um, different like school supplies or uniforms or deals like that or freebies that you can possibly get for them like coloring books or color pages or just free online stuff for them. Now for all those people who are asking me about, because I, I do get messages every single week about um, homeschooling because I homeschool my children. So um, there are several links because I've had so many people ask me. Um, I decided to put it to put it or to pin it right at the very top. So you'll find this post right here and it has this picture right here and it says right here Texas homeschool homeschool requirements what Texas requires to homeschool. So you can click this link and it'll take you straight to all the information you need to know. Now you can also look at all the comment section. So you go here and there's all these different comments that I put in there. So all of this is a bunch of information that will help you um, to learn more about homeschooling. So, like, if they have to do any testing, or what is the requirement to take them out of school, placement tests, um, important forms, just a bunch of different links here that you can go ahead and check out. So, okay, so I'm going to take you to this link right here that gives you the basic information about what the requirements are. So, right here it says Texas Homeschool Requirements, what Texas requires to homeschool. You can click on this link and it'll take you straight to this one right here where it says Texas Homeschool Coalition Association. Now this one, um, if you do want to be a part of this, you do have to, um, hold on, please subscribe to the Okay. Okay. Um, you do have to pay a membership fee to be a part of this right here, but in case you ever had like a CPS case that, I don't know, you had an issue with family member and they decided to call CPS on you or whatever, um, usually CPS will get involved, but they don't do anything against you unless the children are harmed or they can see that they're not learning anything. But if you have proof that you've been teaching at home, there shouldn't be a problem. Um, but there are cases like that, and if you do need a lawyer, that is what you want to be a member of this for. So Texas Homeschool um, Coalition Association. So they have lawyers here that will help you in case you need to go to court and stuff like that. But if you are pretty okay in... <clears throat> like if you are for sure you're not going to have issues like that, then you don't need to be a member of this, but it does share a lot of great information on this website, so you can learn from here. So right here, we're going to go ahead and read this real quick. Texas state law requirements regarding homeschooling. To homeschool legally in Texas, you must follow three state law requirements, which is the instruction must be bona fide, which means like it's not... It's not a sham, which means it's legit. It's going to be something that um, 
they're actually learning from. So it says right here, the curriculum must be in visual form. So like books or workbooks or video monitors. So things you can show them like from YouTube or Netflix, like different videos you can check out from the library. Um, as long as the kids are learning, you can um, show proof. Like you can make them do journals and they can write about what they saw in the video. That would help also, just journaling. Um, workbooks. Um, you can purchase several workbooks from like Dollar Tree or from Five Below. There's several of them. If you go online, you can just look up. You can find a bunch of them on Amazon. You can um, go on YouTube and look up a bunch of different homeschool moms. And they share their experience with different curriculums. So you can do that also. You can also take them to the library. And at the library, they have ABC Mouse on the computers. They have different um, books they can check out. We like to go to the library. It's it's really quiet during the day. There's not so many kids. I know for the one in Edinburgh, um, there's not like a lot of noise. So that's a really great place to go. But if you're going to the McCallum one, I have experience because my kids like to go to the McCallum one a lot. Um they do have a little bit more um, noise over there because they do have more families that are homeschoolers over there. And they do um, get the rooms, you know, separate their rooms and stuff like that. Or, you know, they have little, a lot of little toddlers there. So depending on the hour that you go also. So anyway, um, then it says here, the curriculum must include the five basic subjects of reading, spelling, grammar, mathematics and good citizenship now the debate has been on what good citizenship would mean so basically that would be like your history like your social studies that, that's what you would be teaching for good citizenship so um, science is not required um, like all the extracurricular activities like choir and um, like computers and stuff like that we do I do teach computers I also teach scripture time I do science as well, so, but these are the ones that they're requiring you to do, which is reading, spelling, grammar, mathematics, and good citizenship, which would be your history or your social studies. So there's also a video here that you can watch, um, what else, let's see, um, okay, so in the state of Texas, it's actually really laid back, there's not you know, they're not really hard on you. And I know in different states it it is harder and there's different requirements. But for the state of Texas, you know, it's it's pretty laid back and they're pretty, um, they're not as hard on you. So as long as you're teaching what you, what you need to, um, I can show you, you guys can go to my YouTube where I can show you if you guys um, have any questions of some of the things that I teach, I can definitely go into and go ahead and show you right now um, some of the journals that my kids do and I can give you an idea what what are some of the things that um, you can teach the kids but definitely go to this um, website and you can read a lot more about um, like the state requirements and stuff so if you want to see um, how I withdrew my kids you can go to this video right here it's right underneath this website that we just went to and it'll be right here where it says my kids last day at school you just click this link right here and it'll take you to the video where i took them out from school hi guys it's junior i want to go ahead and do this quick video okay guys so i finally um got out of the school so let me show you we're still here in the parking lot um just got the kids out right now it was a very simple process i was actually kind of nervous i was actually kind of you know, <laughs> I was kind of worried about what they were going to ask me and stuff, because I had talked to my aunt, and my aunt had told me that they were going to try to get me to do a letter and, like, you know, just um, get some... Anyway, so you guys can go to this um, video, and it'll tell you exactly um, what you need to do and stuff. It's no big deal. It's nothing. I was all nervous and stuff, but you can just go there to that link, and you can see that video, and... Let's see right here. It says, there are thousands of curriculum providers and homeschool parents 
are free to choose curriculum that best meets the needs of their student while satisfying the requirements of the law. Homeschool curriculum does not have to be approved by the state because homeschools are private schools. So just to let you guys know about um, that, and each kid has different needs. So some people have kids with disabilities and things like that, so you need to accommodate, um, you know, different different curriculums for different um, disabilities. And so I can't tell you exactly what curriculum to get, but I can just tell you what I do with my kids. But, you know, to each their own, you guys decide. Um, I already showed you guys the requirements. Okay. Um, how do we verify that students are being taught at home? It says right here, the state of Texas acknowledges that the parents of a homeschooled student are solely responsible for their child's education. The child is accountable exclusively to their parents for the quality of his or her education. Texas does not require any regular assessment of the child's academic progress. The Tebow bill implements verification standards as close as possible to the standards required of public school participants. Public school students must receive passing grades in each of their classes. In the case of homeschoolers, parents will verify that, the, that their student has passing grades. Public school students also have to pass regular standardized tests demonstrating. Like if you want to put them into extracurricular activities and things like that, like you want to put them in football and things like that, if, even if they're homeschoolers, you can still do that, you know, but they they do um, usually want you to have a report card in place and stuff for the kids, so just keep that in mind. Um, let's see, right here, subsection D of the Tim Tebow explicitly guarantees that families retain ultimate authority and oversight of all academic standards relating to participation in, in UIL activities. So, like I said, if you want to put them in other activities you want to go and look at that. Now this is a letter right here that you can take I believe to the school. Let me see. Um, okay so the, I think this is a, a revised letter that was sent for homeschools. Okay homeschools. Okay the issues surrounding students schooled at home continue to be of significant interest to parents and school districts because of the number of inquiries the Texas Education Agency, which is the TEA, receives regarding this matter. I am providing some general information with respect to the agency's position on how homeschooled students, on homeschool students. Okay, so you guys can go ahead and um, read this information. Um, I had to read all this information. I just put links there for you guys so you guys can um, take the time to go over it. Video of why I decided to homeschool my kids. Okay, so there's a video here of why I decided to homeschool my kids. Right here. Morning, guys. Wanted to go ahead so and do this everybody video. has their reasons for wanting to homeschool. Mine was because my son was being bullied at school. And my daughter um, was not reading, and she was a first grader, and she was just not reading. They were not taking the time to um, really help her to get to that reading level, first grading, uh, first grade reading level. And now my daughter's read more than 200 books. She reads and reads and reads, and it's all about just giving them books that they enjoy reading giving them the opportunity to choose the books that they would like to read and then they engage in reading and they they love reading so um, I'll just tell you a little bit about that in a little bit because I'm not I'm gonna get uh, off course so anyway um, there's also here Texas homeschool law you can go to this link right here <clears throat> Uh, okay, homeschooling Texas under state law. Are you considering homeschooling your child? You can do it. Um, as you get started, it's important to make sure you comply with the education laws where you live. This page helps you understand how to homeschool legally in Texas step by step. Texas compulsory, compulsory um, school attendance age. From age 6 to 19, children must attend school, either public or private, includes homeschooling. Remember that homeschooling is considered a private school, so just, you know, um, understand that. 
until they graduate or get a GED. If a child has been enrolled in school for pre-kinder, kindergarten, or first grade, the child must continue going to school that academic year, even if he or she is not yet six. So, um, with my daughter, I took her out. There was no big deal. She was in first grade, and I took her out. No problems, no questions asked. They just, you know, they don't give you the books. I will tell you that. The school keeps their books. But that's fine. You can purchase your own. Uh, let's see what else. Mm, withdrawing your child from his or her current school. If you want to start homeschooling during the school year and your child is currently enrolled in a public or private school, um, recommends that you formally withdraw your child from that school. If you are going to start homeschooling after that school year is over and your child is considering enrolled for the following year, you guys can take the time to read all this. I mean, I'm not going to read every single thing for you, but you do want to keep some record you want to do some record keeping, you know, to show what days your kids go to school. I can show you a video of how I do it. Everybody does it differently, but there is that link if you want to, if you want to go ahead and check that out. You can see here, uh, Perry delivers message to Texas Homeschool Coalition. You can see this video right here. This one is on YouTube. Howdy, this is Governor Rick Perry. I just got through addressing a group of homeschoolers here on the south steps of the Texas Capitol. Uh, Tim Lambert's doing a great job of uh, leading that uh, coalition, and no group of people I think more of than moms and dads who sacrifice to teach their children at home. Uh, I hope each of you will continue to be very involved in the process here to protect uh, homeschoolers' rights and to keep Texas the number one homeschooling state in the nation. God bless you. So that's pretty awesome right there. We're um, proud of our freedoms. Proud of our right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We're proud to say we're Americans, because at least we know we're free. But how free are we to teach our own children? Let's get the facts. In the state of New York, only parents deemed competent are allowed to teach their own children. In order to meet the criteria, parents must submit the name, age, and grade of their child, the materials they'll be using, as well as the names of every single person that will be teaching for every child, for every year, from kindergarten through 12th grade. But being qualified isn't enough. Reports must be filled four times each year, containing the number of hours, description of the material covered, and a grade for each subject included in the lengthy list of yearly requirements. In the state of Washington, unless parents meet educational qualifications or are approved by their local school superintendents, they must receive supervision by a certified teacher each and every week. In Pennsylvania, parents must begin each school year by filling notarized documents with the school district, including the outline of the proposed educational objectives. Furthermore, the district superintendent must be provided with an annual portfolio of each student's records and materials. As if that's not enough, each student must be evaluated yearly by a teacher or psychologist. And if your child is a special needs student, their educational program must meet even further qualifications. Next door in Louisiana, parents must apply with the state... Okay, so voucher, there the are different requirements and efficient instructor for different unfit. states. So let's go to we'll Texas. Those abilities by a, it's just a little bit different. Okay. Really teaching their children. However, right here. In Texas, it's just a little bit different. Simply being a parent in Texas is ample qualification to teach your own child without the supervision of a state-certified teacher. There is no need to register with your school district. No need to inform them of any extracurricular activities. No need for testing. And no need to have your child evaluated annually by a psychologist. In fact, the only requirement for Texas homeschoolers is that they pursue math, reading, spelling, grammar, and good citizenship in a bona fide manner. Ultimately, you raise your children, not the village. We're proud to say that we homeschool in Texas, where people are free. Okay, so I thought that one was important for you guys to watch, just to clarify it. <laughs> um, we're pretty lucky here in Texas that we're able to 
um, teach our children and we don't have so many requirements like in other different states. Okay, so there's a bunch of other links here, guys. New homeschooling laws, how free, what makes homeschooling in Texas easier. Seven easy steps to begin, Texas homeschool, um, defend family rights, um, school district recommends homeschooling to family, placement and academic assessment testing right here. So the only time that you're going to have to do an assessment is when you put the kids back in school, if you want to put the kids back in school. So like let's say I wanted to take my kids to get back in school, enroll them back in school the, uh, tomorrow. Um, they would have to probably take a an assessment test, you know, just to see to to see where they're at and to make sure that they, you know, are where they're supposed to be. So that's the only time they would have to take an assessment test. But if they continue to homeschool, they don't have to take an assessment test here at home or anything. Um, important forms. There's I just put this link here in case you wanted to check out those forms. Uh, the Texas Education Code. Texas Homeschool. Like I said, this website right here is really awesome. It shares a lot of information. If you do want to be a part of it, there is a fee for it, but if not, you can just, you know, get a lot of information from there, and that's it. Record keeping. I do do some record keeping as far as attendance, as far as, um, what else? Let's see, like uh, their reading logs of how many books that they've read. They do all their journaling. So I have all those composition books. I don't throw any of them away. I'm holding on to all their workbooks that I purchased and that they've already um, finished. So, yeah, I do have some record keeping in case I needed to ever come to my home and check. I do have that. Um, curriculum, Texas Homeschool. Okay, so there's different curriculums here. And show you what they have here. Let's see examples, types of curriculum, choosing a curriculum, and curriculum reviews. There's traditional curriculum. There's unit study. There's classical. There's techno uh, technological. There's Charlotte Mason. This one's really awesome. So many people on YouTube um, go for Charlotte Mason. Uh, DVDs, uh, secular electives, special needs, and you can go ahead and go through all this depending on what your needs are. Let's see. You can go to different websites, like I said, or you can just purchase them online depending on what it is you're looking for. But YouTube really does help you. There's so many homeschool moms that are willing to share the curriculums they purchased and their thoughts on them. So, yeah, there is help out there, guys. I'm not an expert on homeschooling. I'm just doing the best I can. There are two online, um, and for all my other homeschool moms that are on here watching, if you guys can help me with trying to mention some of them, you guys can just type it down below to help others. Um, there is Monarch. That is an online school. I know my aunt uses that for her son, which is Monarch. M-O-N-A-R-C-H, Monarch. And then there's another one that's called K-12. And that one, um, my friend actually told me about that one. So that one is, I believe, enrolled with the actual public school, but you can do it from home. So you can do that one. There's a... There's the paid version where you pay for the service, and then there's a free version. I think she's the one that has her kids on that one. So those are the only two that I know of. I'm sure there are countless others, but I just, you know, I don't know all, all of them. And then my aunt, which is the one that kind of um, helped me out in deciding whether to do it or not, she just told me just take